Hello and welcome to this video for ACCA paper F1 Accountant in Business. We're on chapter 7 at the moment, chapter 7, and we're going to be looking at specific functions of accounting and internal financial control. There's the word cloud highlighting some of the key words that we're going to be looking at. Management, accounting, internal, internal again, financial functions, control, and so on. Let's look at some of the key knowledge then to start with, and we're on page 31. First of all, we're highlighting the distinction between financial accounting and management accounting. Both forms of accounting, but one is focused on financial and the other one is focused on management. So what do we mean by that? Financial accounting is largely external largely external use so shareholders potential investors banks for example will use the financial accounting reports financial accounting has a regulated format you have to follow IFRS's for example and finally the point we've got here financial accounts are often subject to an audit so that's the financial accounting side of things what do we mean by management accounting? Management, compared to financial accounting, management accounting is mainly for internal use. So it's accounting provided for management information. Because it's provided for management information, it can be in any format, any format they like. Compared to financial accounting, which is in a regulated format, management accounting can be in any format. And also, it's not audited. It's for internal use only. Just highlighting down the bottom here, treasury functions. What do we mean by treasury functions within a business? Well, these are functions which aim to, aim to identify, mitigate tax liabilities. It also looks at methods of obtaining finance, methods of managing working capital, these are all forms of treasury functions within a business. OK, moving to the top of page 32. Some more key knowledge here you have to make sure you understand for the exam. We've got internal and external auditing. What do we mean by internal and external auditing? External auditors. Now, external auditors are auditors that are not employed within the company. They are appointed to report to the shareholders. So they are independent companies, independent firms of auditors. They're independent and they report to the shareholders on whether or not the financial statements show a true and fair view. Internal auditors, as the name suggests, internal auditors are appointed to report to management internally. They're not external, they're internal auditors. They're appointed by management to report to management on a variety of items. But the main point I'm highlighting here is how the company manages its risk. As you've probably thought uh, already, if an internal auditor is appointed by management to report to management, on items which management are responsible for, then a potential limitation of internal audit is independence. OK, the next area you need to make sure you understand, we have internal controls and internal check. Now, an internal control is a control or a process that has been put in place internally by management to help prevent things from going wrong. It's a control internally to prevent things from going wrong. And as we say here, it's management's responsibility for having an adequate internal control policy. An internal check is actually a component of internal control. And the basic idea behind this is making sure that no one single person is wholly responsible for a single task. So in other words, 
every single individual's work should be checked by somebody else. So there's dual responsibility there. We've now got this concept of fraud. Fraud and fraudulent behaviour. So what is fraud to start with? Fraud is an intentional. So it's a deliberate act whereby an individual or group of individuals use deception to obtain an illegal or unfair advantage. So it's deliberately deceiving people, it's deliberately doing things wrong. Some examples we've got, falsifying the accounts. For example, window dressing. This concept of teaming and lading. So, I'm an individual, work for a company. The company has a bank account here. I have my own personal account, personal bank account. I raise an invoice to client A. Client A pays money to me as an employee. I have a duty to process it towards the company bank account. But instead, I transfer that money to my personal bank account. An invoice is then raised to company B. Company B pays, but I treat it as though it's paying company A's debt. Transfer that to the company's bank account. So now, both companies, both customers have paid, but in the company accounts only A is having shown as paid, but there's some money here. So what happens with invoice C to company C? I treat that as paying company B, company B's obligation. Everything's okay so far, but I'm teaming and lading. And the problem is I've defrauded the company by transferring money outside. That is an example of fraud, which is an intentional act which aims to deceive, uh, obtain an illegal or unfair advantage. Teaming and lading. Next one we've got is false payments. Finally, on this concept of fraud, who's actually responsible for preventing and identifying fraud? It's the directors. The directors are ultimately responsible. How can they do this? Well, they should ensure they have strong internal controls. Internal controls to prevent teaming and lading, for example. They need to have a strong internal audit function as well. Okay, that finishes this chapter, so thank you very much for listening.